Some recent chatter in the hobby about MicroStrategy billionaire CEO Michael Saylor, why he went big on Bitcoin and maybe not sports cards collectibles. Stick around. to all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends. How are we doing? I hope that you are having a fantastic day. If you are looking for almost daily sports card collectibles, finance stuff all kind of mixed into one, please hit all the buttons below, subscribe, notifications, like if you like what you hear. Also, don't forget to connect with me on IG at Sports Card Dad, and I'm also on the Twitter machine, The Sports Card Dad. All right, today we are going to talk some about billionaire Michael Saylor. He is well known as the CEO of MicroStrategy. He's a big time believer in Bitcoin and he's got a sense of humor on social media. MicroStrategy is a tech company, public company on the NASDAQ, and it also happens to be a massive holder of Bitcoin. There have been some talks recently about why Michael Saylor might have gone into Bitcoin as opposed to other asset classes like sports cards, collectibles. And so I've been doing more research on this guy. I had already known about him, but I wanted to dig in a little bit more and just kind of hear more of what this guy has to say is his overall feelings on economic stuff and tie that into what we see today. One great interview was a recent interview he did with Natalie Brunel on the Natalie Brunel YouTube channel. She is what looks to be a Bitcoin podcaster, YouTuber, and she interviews a lot of influential people within the crypto space. And so when listening to him, there's a lot of things that I liked. And some of the things I thought would be interesting, whether you're into cryptocurrency or sports cards collectibles, is he is looking at assets from the standpoint of currencies and how inflation is impacting global currencies. And I guess a piece of the good news is, yes, do, does the U.S. dollar have an issue? It certainly does. But this is a global phenomenon. And the U.S. dollar, even though it's being whittled down, whittled down, whittled down because of inflation and overprinting, etc., it's really no different. Actually, it's worse with the Japanese yen and with the euro, for example. Global currencies are being devalued. And so the one thing that he asks is kind of like part of his his mantra is, what are wealthy people going to be buying in 10 years? What are they going to be putting their money into? And we look today at kind of that number one reason why cryptocurrency and very specifically to Michael Saylor, Bitcoin. So Michael Saylor, let, let's also differentiate. He's not a massive crypto guy. He's a big Bitcoin guy. He actually looks at them as different things. He actually believes that, that once regulation comes from what I heard in his interviews and some of these interviews is, is that Bitcoin is separate from the other cryptocurrencies where an argument could be made that the other cryptocurrencies could be considered securities, whereas Bitcoin being decentralized is a separate deal. And what he means by that is, is that all the other cryptocurrencies have a handful of people that if they make certain decisions, it can have a negative impact on that particular crypto and it could go to zero. Bitcoin, of course, could go to zero as well, but it is decentralized to where it's a little bit more complicated for that to happen by design. And so why is Saylor so big on Bitcoin and why is Mark Cuban so big on cryptocurrency along with Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful? The big reason is, is because institutional investors are looking at this and it looks as if regulation is coming. And what's funny is, is a lot of the retail people, a lot of the crypto bros, kind of the older crypto community sees that as a negative thing. Oh, we don't want regulation. We don't want regulation to come in. Whereas the big time investors, the Michael sailors, the Kevin O'Leary's, et cetera, they want it to be legitimized as a market and that will do it. Regulation. Of course, they're hoping for smart regulation. They're pushing for smart regulation. But once regulation happens, then it's adopted by institutional investors. And that is the end game with this stuff is institutional investors having a hold of it to where you have that flow of institutional money that comes through and, of course, benefits it and makes it a asset class that is respected. So why Bitcoin over sports cards collectibles? Well, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a whole, if we go to the end of 2021, November of 2021, had an overall market cap of $3 
trillion dollars. Now, prices have come down on it. I think it sits now at something like 1.2 or 1.3 trillion dollars right now. And of course, that's it's highly volatile. It fluctuates all over the place. But when we're comparing the amount of global money that's being put into you know, cryptocurrency slash Bitcoin in comparison to collectibles, this is one thing to look at. The collectible space being you know $10 billion, $15 billion, up from a few billion dollars. And so sports card collectibles, being that it's a hobby that's just kind of blown up over the last few years, of course, it's big business now, but it's not on the same level as far as adoption goes as what you would see with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And so that is where there is a draw towards you know Bitcoin for Michael Saylor because of that intrinsic value. Now, a lot of people say like crypto is nothing. There's nothing behind it. It's garbage. And that is totally fine. That's all debatable. And of course, nobody can see the future. So nobody knows what's going to come of any of this stuff. If we're analyzing the why, this is the why. They're looking for scarcity and they see Bitcoin as, look, it's fairly limited in the grand scheme of things. And that is what we like about it. Now, now how does this message impact people that are in, in collectibles? And what Michael Saylor says too, is he says, look 10 years into the future and what are wealthy people going to be buying? And he puts a big emphasis on that rarity piece, scarcity. You know, so if we're looking at kind of the higher end collectibles, again, it's just going to boil down to global currencies going down in value and people looking for what is actually valuable, what's rare and scarce, because currencies are not going to be scarce and they're only going to become less so with inflation kind of rising. And because of all the global debt, they will not be able to stave off inflation completely they're going to have to kind of do the dance. And so because they're not going to be able to do that complete overhaul, it is what it is. We're going to be living with that to where it's the, you know, these currencies, these global currencies are devalued. Not a lot can be done there. But what I would say too, if this is something that is of interest to you, kind of this macroeconomic stuff, I would say go and look at some of these Michael Saylor interviews, because even if you don't agree with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, it's really, really good to listen to different folks talking about it. And he makes some really really interesting, strong points. You'll look at it and you'll think like, this guy is making way too much sense. You know, so take a look at it. See if it's something that makes any sense to you. Maybe you can just take pieces of it. But for me personally, I like to hear a lot of different viewpoints, whether we're talking about sports card content, collectibles content, cryptocurrency, alternative asset content, whether it's equities, real estate. I like to listen to a lot of different people and try to draw in as much information as possible. Hell, one of my favorite channels is Alpha Investments, Rudy Alpha Investments. I don't own one Magic the Gathering card, probably never will, but the guy is entertaining and he really does understand a lot of economic stuff. So I like listening to a lot of different viewpoints, Michael Saylor being one of them. He's a very interesting guy and you can probably glean some things from what he is saying. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments and let me know too if you're looking into some of these other folks whether it be a you know a Mark Cuban or a Michael Saylor or a Kevin O'Leary you know just kind of overall finance stuff because yes these guys might have agendas they're obviously you know they're in on what they're in on but at the same time they are in it for a reason and a lot of times when you are the you know the average Joe like myself and you're just trying to figure out where to be where to move capital to it is helpful to follow the money I've always heard that as kind of where is the big money going. You know, follow the money. Thanks again for joining for another video today. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.